Thank you for joining today's uh, webinar about the National Child Awareness Month Youth Ambassador Program. My name is Amanda Villacorda and I'm the Director of Youth Service America. I'm happy to uh, be presenting today's webinar to share a little bit more about the National Child Awareness Month uh, Youth Ambassador Program and to answer any questions that you have. Just real quick, we'll run through the agenda for today's webinar. I'll do a short uh, program overview to share a little bit um, information about YSA, Festival of Children, and the NCAM program. We'll talk about uh, who's eligible to apply for the um, Youth Ambassador program. I'll cover some highlights of the application, so what are some key areas um, to, to cover and some of the uh, important questions in the application. I'll go over a little bit about the training that will take place here in D.C. in September and a few of those logistics. And then we'll finish up with just going over the program timeline um, sort of from now until September, what that looks like. And then, as I mentioned, we'll have a Q&A period towards the end to answer any questions that you have. So a little bit of information about Youth Service America. Um, our mission is to improve communities by increasing the number and diversity of young people serving in substantive roles. And we do this through a few different ways. One of them is partnering with schools and organizations that engage youth directly. We also provide uh, funding uh, such as grants like this and resources to youth directly and to our partners. And we also have a few recognition programs that really highlight the hard work that youth are doing in their communities. Um, we've been fortunate enough to partner with Festival of Children, which is an organization based out of California. And their mission is to improve the lives of children by strengthening the charities that serve them. And they do that by so supporting organizations that work directly with youth, by bringing attention to the important issue um, that, sh that many children's issues by uh, creating what we keep calling uh, NCAM, but is the National Child Awareness Month, which is in September, and by creating um, this ambassador program. They've really uh, created the opportunity for youth to take a position to solve uh, many of children's issues. Um, the Youth Ambassador Program was actually started last year, so this is our second year of the program. And it's a year-long ambassadorship that trains youth to combat critical issues that are facing youth. Ambassadors are able to receive support, advocacy training, and planning guidance for their service projects that take place throughout the year. The program kicks off in September, which is, like I said, during National Child Awareness Month. And then ambassadors use the funding, training, and ongoing support um, to mobilize their peers and engage the media and public officials to raise awareness around issues affecting children. Um, and you may have seen in some of the, the information on our website, we are giving out 51 um, ambassador grants this year, so that's one per state and D.C. So to run through a few of the eligibility requirements for the grant, um, you must be between the age of 16 and 22, and we are looking for um, ambassadors that are at least 16 by September, so when they come to the training here in D.C. You must be able to attend the three-day training that takes place here in D.C., September 17th through the 19th. Um, you must be able to use the $1,000 grant that is from Festival of Children to mobilize youth-focused service campaigns and projects in your community and throughout the state. We're also looking for youth that are able to participate um, during some of our, our monthly participations, such as webinars, um, conference calls, and sort of other online uh, programs that we have. Uh, we have about three different reports that take place during the year, so we are um, requiring that ambassadors are able to uh, submit those progress reports throughout the, throughout the program year. We're looking for ambassadors that are either um, already collaborating with schools and organizations or are able to create those collaborations so that they really are able to grow 
um, the importance of the work that they're doing with others around them. Um, if you haven't yet jumped into the online application, you will see that there is a consent form that needs to be signed. Um, if you are under the age of 18, your parent or guardian does need to sign that. Um, and it has a lot of great information that we can collect to make sure uh, if there's any health, allergy, um, special needs, that we get those taken care of while at the training. And the last piece is to uh, make sure that all the ambassadors um, incorporate a piece of their project to take place during um, Global Youth Service Day in 2014. And just a little bit of background, um, Global Youth Service Day is YSA's um, big campaign that we run each year. It's uh, in April and it's really just an opportunity to draw attention on uh, over the, sort of the course of three days over a weekend when we're able to sort of shine the light on all of the um, activities that youth are doing to serve at a global level. And so with asking youth to serve over Global Youth Service Day, we're able to really show the, the big impact. All right, I wanted to run through just a, a few highlights on uh, that, that come up in the online application and maybe give a little bit more background to those. So um, in the one of the first questions sort of towards the, the end of the application when there's a little bit of uh, narrative responses, um, there's a question that comes up uh, speaking around the community need. And this is where we're really looking for um, projects that are able to address a specific uh, youth issue or child issue in the community. And one of the important things that we're looking for is sort of the research to, to be done or be accessible um, so that each of the ambassadors are able to really grasp um, what's going on around that issue in their community and have the background knowledge um, to speak knowledgeably about it but to also know um, what's going on with that issue so that you are able to create a solution um, and really have an impact. Uh, and sorry, I jumped over the project summary. Um, that's one of the first questions on the, on the narrative uh, piece of the application. And there we're looking for just a very strong and thorough overview of the project, um, that what you're looking to accomplish for the year, and kind of just lay out the big picture um, you know, from September through April, what's that year going to look like for you and what types of projects will you be implementing. We're not looking for a lot of detail in the summary, um, but we are looking for some substance to really know um, that you have sort of done your homework and are, and are serious about taking on this initiative for the year. Uh, then jumping down to uh, the mention of clear metrics, this comes up with the question um, around expected outcomes. And so here we're looking for um, how you will be sort of measuring the progress throughout the year. So we're looking for uh, specific metrics. If you are running a project that's around um, making sure youth have access to food, and so you're doing a food drive, then some of the metrics you might be collecting are the number of cans that get collected during a food drive or the pounds of food that get collected. So here we're just looking for some examples of clear metrics um, and this really gives us the, the knowledge that you understand, you know, the importance of collecting this information and the impact it can show. Um, again, we don't need a lot of detail in this area, but just the, the understanding that you will need to be tracking um, your progress and tracking uh, your efforts throughout the, the year. And then the last one I just wanted to highlight was the, the piece around the sustainable network. And that question comes up with uh, the collaboration question in the application. Uh, as I mentioned before, we're really looking for projects and ambassadors that have access or already established um, relationships with organizations and schools, either in their community or statewide. And we really feel like this gives uh, the youth the opportunity to grow their programs. Um, so, like the example I was just talking about before, um, if, if you're running your project around um, making sure that youth have access to food, perhaps you know a couple of your partners um, in your network could be food banks. And so that way you're able to really not sort of work alone in a silo, but you're working with other um, organizations that have already you know put a lot of thought and care into that issue in your community and 
create a bigger impact. Just to cover a few of uh, the training logistics, as I mentioned, the training will take place here in Washington, D.C. through uh, September 17th through the 19th. Um, you'll see on our um, website the, the application. We have a great FAQ that we put together, and that has a little bit more information about the training and uh, probably answers a few of specific questions. One of them is that we will have um, a group of ambassadors that are sort of on the West Coast come in on uh, Monday, so that way they're here and prepared for the training that starts uh, around noon on Tuesday. So just a quick run through of sort of the activities of the, of the training here in D.C. Um, as I mentioned, things will get started on Tuesday around lunchtime. We'll do a welcome and have a, a few beginning sessions. And we'll also be doing sort of some prep work for the Hill visits. Uh, on Wednesday in the morning, we're looking to have all the Hill visits take place. And so that's a really great opportunity for ambassadors to go down to Capitol Hill, meet with their respected, respective um, senators or representatives, share what they're doing in their communities um, and how, you know, the, the, how others can sort of get involved and uh, really make a big impact. After the, the Hill visits on Wednesday, um, all the ambassadors will come back to the hotel and that's where we'll have a few more sessions and then we're going to have a, a really fun dinner in the evening. Then on Thursday, we have uh, sort of the wrap-up and next steps in the morning, and then we'll have lunch, and then the ambassadors are taking off. So it'll be a quick three days, but um, it's a lot of fun, a lot of great energy, and it's a great way to start the program year. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the training dates are the 17th through the 19th. Uh, the location of the, the training is um, the Hotel Palomar, which is here in Washington, D.C. And if you're familiar with the area, it's up in DuPont. And then the other um, portion of the training that will take place um, on Capitol Hill when we're doing the Hill visit. So primarily all of the um, sort of time will be spent at the hotel doing the, the training, networking, and then also, also at the Capitol Hill. Uh, just a quick mention that all of the travel plans will be made by YSA. So after the ambassadors have been um, notified, you'll receive some information from us. One of the things you'll need to do is sign an MOU. And along with the MOU, you'll receive information to set up your travel plans. And one of the things you receive is um, a really great online form where you just put in uh, a little bit of information, and then that generates uh, like sort of contact with our travel planner, and they're able to set up um, all of your travel arrangements. So whether it be um, coming in through um, trains, bus, uh, planes, we all have we'll have that all taken care of. Uh, so just make sure that if you are awarded, that you're not setting up any of your own travel plans. Again. YSA will take care of everything. And also another mention, um, the, the travel in um, Festival of Children has been very generous to cover all of the, the travel and the time uh, that the ambassadors are here. So the things like the hotel, the food, um, transportation while in DC, all of that's covered through the grant by Festival of Children, but it's only for the ambassador. So if there are parents chaperones that want to come, they need to set up all of their own arrangements. And then the last thing to note is that there will be chaperones um, with the amb ambassadors the entire time um, of the training. As the ambassadors uh, arrive, whether it be um, at the airport or the bus station, they're greeted by YSA staff, and then they're escorted to the hotel. The entire time they're at the hotel, we'll always have at least five staff members, but usually more, um, that will be at the hotel, including overnight, staying overnight. And then as the ambassadors are traveling, whether it be around D.C. or down to the Capitol Hill, again, they'll always have a chaperone. And then the same as the ambassadors are leaving, they'll be escorted um, by YSA staff to the airport bus station um, to make sure that they get safely on their way. All right, so I'll run through the program timeline. 
The applications are due June 16th. Um, towards the end of June is when we'll be doing the review and putting together uh, the winners. Um, then all notifications will be sent out at the beginning of July. So around July, um, you should get a notice of whether or not you were awarded. So we'll announce the ambassadors towards the beginning of July. And then from July through August, ambassadors are then um, able to sign their MOUs, set up their travel arrangements through YSA, and we have a couple of uh, pre-training webinars that we'll run through just to make sure everyone's prepared and, and on the same page to arrive here in D.C. in September. Um, as I mentioned, September is National Child Awareness Month, and it's also the, the training here in D.C., the 17th through the 19th. And then from September through April is when we're really looking for the ambassadors to implement their projects. Um, and we, as I mentioned before, we have a few uh, monthly check-ins that occur. Then April 11th through 14th is Global Youth Service Day, so that's kind of the culmination of the program. And then in May we do a sort of a few uh, final pieces to wrap up the program, and there's some reporting that's due. So that's kind of a, a quick overview of the timeline. Again, the sort of important immediate piece to remember is that the applications are due June 16th. All right, so I'll go ahead and turn it over to you guys. If you have any questions, go ahead and type them into um, sort of the chat box on the right-hand side of your page. Um, as you type in questions, I'll read them out and be able to hopefully answer them all. Um, if not, you have my email address here on the screen, um, which are always, feel free to, to ask any questions or email me with anything that you may need. And then I've also included the link to um, our website that has all the information about the program and then, uh, again, or it also has the link uh, to the online application. Uh, there's a question that came up. If we're able to provide a lever, letter to a school to, to make sure that the ambassadors are excused from school. And yes, we can definitely provide um, letters to anyone that's attending school and needs to provide the reason for why they're, they're not there. Other questions? Um, there's a question, if parents want to go, is there any activities, etc., that they can participate in with the kids? Um, unfortunately, no. So like, I, like I said, we have such a short amount of time um, to have the ambassadors here for three days, and, and two of those sort of are, are half travel days. So while the ambassadors are here, all of their training sessions, um, networking pieces, hill visits are just for the ambassadors. Um, so if a parent does want to accompany a child here, again, they have to set up all their own travel and uh, accommodations um, and sort of have to sort of find other things to do um, while the ambassadors are participating in the training. Um, there's a question of what types of projects can, can be done. Uh, and I'll actually point you to the website on, on ysa.org slash NCAM towards the bottom. There's a link to all of um, the ambassadors' projects from last year. And that kind of gives you a good overview and, and a few examples of the types of projects that we're looking for and that were implemented last year. Um, there's a question about the online application. Um, I do encourage you to, to, to get on there and take a look. Um, we tried to make it sort of as short and sweet as possible. There's a few attachments that you'll need to include. One of them is the consent form that you'll need to download, fill out, and then um, upload to the application. There are not any, any letters of recommendation. It's simply the consent form and a budget, so kind of a, a general overview of how you'll be using the $1,000 grant um, over the course of the year. So those are the only two attachments that you need. Um, there's a question about sort of 
we kind of keep using the term um, youth and children broadly, um, and sort of does the does the um, focus of of youth and children include teens? And yes, it does. Here at YSA, we define a youth as someone from five to twenty five. So it's sort of a big range that we're looking at um, youth themselves being able to impact um, issues that affect other youth, including teens. Uh, there's a question about if I submitted an application already, can I go back in and revise it? You should be able to. Um, I do believe we have that setting on the application. If you aren't able to, just go ahead and shoot me an email, and I'll make sure you'll be able to, to access that. Uh, there's a question about any uh, list of responsibilities or requirements from the sponsoring organization. We really don't have a list of anything that they need to do exactly. Um, but as they are the sponsoring organization, I think the biggest thing is that they're receiving the grant funds on behalf of the youth. And so that way they need to make sure that they're working directly with the youth and the youth have access to those funds. So it's a good, um, it's a good sort of practice to have the conversation while filling out the application about how will the youth access the, the funds, um, the grant funds through the sponsoring organization or school, and how can the sponsoring organization or school support the efforts of the youth ambassador. Um, there's a question if the, the project has an end date. No, we're really looking for projects that are ongoing, but the way that we sort of define this program here so we can kind of have a, a start and end date is um, we will be sort of tracking and following and helping with the, the elements of your project that take place September through April. So we definitely understand and encourage that your project will continue and take place um, long after that, but that's just sort of the, the window that we give for this program specifically. Uh, there's a question if um, one organization can submit applications from more than one state. Um, definitely. We're open to receiving as many applications as possible, and there's, there's no limit um, that an organization can't submit. Um, there was a question around uh, sort of the number of people that are applying and how many What's the likelihood of being accepted? I can't go into sort of specific numbers or, or answers, but one thing to keep in mind is that, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have 51 grants to give out, and it's one from each state and D.C. So uh, the the sort of, uh, you know, sort of when we actually start reviewing those applications, we do it on a state-by-state -state basis. So we're looking for one ambassador from Texas and one ambassador from New Jersey. So if we receive, say, 50 grants from New Jersey and 100 from Texas, those are separated and um, sort of reviewed against each other. Um, sorry, I'm trying to keep up. You guys are starting to rapid fire send them in, which is great because I have a lot of great questions. So to make sure I get to them all. Um, would environmental service projects uh, that affect youth be considered a valid project? Definitely. Yeah, we had some uh, environmental projects uh, this year. Again, there was a, a, a question around the types of projects we're looking for. Um, any issue that it, that affects youth and children, and again, take a look at our website for um, project listings from last year. There's a question. Um, we do list sort of the the overarching projects, um, and sort of ask you to choose which one your project falls within. But there's an other uh, category or option. Um, it. If you choose the other option it, and sort of put in what your project is focused on different from the other categories, it doesn't affect 
your project at all. It doesn't, you won't get a higher score or a better sort of rating if you choose one of those that we've already given. So we really just want to know, we, we definitely know that there's different issues in every community. Um, we kind of tried to lump some of them together and, and cover, include some of the overarching issues, but definitely feel free to click that other box and, and tell us what your project is focused on. Um, there's a question around the grant usage um, and sort of what the money can be used for. I encourage you to take a look on the application. We have a very pretty thorough breakdown of what the grant can and can't be used for. So any questions around sort of what the, the grant funds can be used for, I just encourage you to take a look at the online application. No, there's not a resume required for the application. There's a question if the project can be something that um, someone's created or implemented in their community or does it need to be a national program? It definitely doesn't need to be a national program. Um, we had a lot of ambassadors from last year that started out in their own local community and really were able to, um, to, to create a, a bigger impact at, at the statewide level. Um, but we definitely aren't looking for, um, for any ambassadors that start, are starting off at the national level. Um, there's a question around uh, if the project needs to be inclusive of both genders. Um, the project's more focused on girl empowerment. That's that's definitely okay. It, it um, I would say we are we whenever we talk about sort of the diversity of youth volunteering, we're looking for projects that are inclusive of anyone to volunteer, um, whether it be boys and girls. But if you're focusing on a specific issue, um, that you know that women and girls are feeling empowered, empowered uh, that type of project is definitely fine. Uh, there's, this is a really good question. I've answered quite a few of these um, via email. Can a project help children in developing countries? Um, this, this program is really focused on the, the um, impact in, um, excuse me, the impact that's made in your state or in your community. Um, so we know there's lots of great efforts that are going on, you know, here in the U.S. to help international projects, and we support many of those. But for speci specifically for this project, we're looking for um, service projects and impact to be made um, at, at the local level and within your own state. Uh, there's a question if the budget should include in corporate match or any in-kind funding. Uh, definitely, yeah, we'd love to see when you're able to um, already have some funding to support your project or any in-kind donations. Uh, there's a question if there's a final, pro uh, final presentation of the project at the end of the year. Um, we don't have anything formally that's put together. We do have some ambassadors that have created their sort of own reports and, and, and sort of overviews themselves. The only requirement at the end is the final report that needs to be submitted to us, um, but nothing more formal. Uh, there's a question around working with organizations. Um, you yourself, the, the youth themselves, need to be submitting the applications. Um, there is a portion of the application that you'll see um, ask questions about your sponsoring organization, but the youth need to be filling that out. Um, and the, the youth themselves are the ones leading the project. So although we ask for the support of organizations and partnering with, with, with schools or organizations, um, the, youth that, or sorry, the work that's taking place is coming from the youth. Uh, there's a question about a list of requirements for the application. Um, I don't think we have sort of that broken down anywhere on our website, but as soon as you log in, you'll be able to, to click through the pages and see um, what's required of the application. As I mentioned before, we tried to keep it short and sweet as possible, um, but it does have some specific questions as the ones I mentioned earlier, the project uh, 
criteria, the application criteria that really give us a, a good overview of what you're looking to do for the year. Um, there's a question if projects with special needs would be eliminated. Um, no, I can't see why not. As long as, you know, if it's working with children and youth, um, I think that's fine. There's a question if the project should be undertaken solely by the ambassador or can a school and group um, take on the project. Uh, we are looking for an ambassador to, to definitely at least be the main sort of point person to come to the training and uh, to be in touch with YSA. Um, but with all of our ambassadors, it, you know, they have many volunteers that help out in different groups and clubs. So if there is a, um, you know, a, a group that helps out, I think we're definitely encouraging that. Um, but we are looking for the ambassador to, to be the leader and really be able to um, move things along. All right, so I think I've gotten through all the questions that have come in so far. If I forgot uh, or skipped over, um, please go ahead and just type it in again, so that way I make sure I covered it. Um, or just let me know if you guys have any other questions. There's a question if there's a minimum requirement in hours. No, we don't have a, a specific you know, set time that ambassadors need to be working on the program. Um, it, you know, every, every project is different, and we know ambassadors, you know, youth have a lot going on <laughs> at school, at home, and in their communities. Um, so if there's uh, other things they need to be doing, we try to be supportive as possible. But um, I think in the, the FAQ, we do mention that, you know, most of our ambassadors were at least putting in at least, you know, five to ten hours a month just to kind of keep up with things and, and making sure their project continues. But as they are implementing, you know, a specific service project in their community, sometimes those things take a couple days of, you know, a lot of hard work and, and extra hours so that can fluctuate. Uh, there's a question if this program can be used for Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts awards. Yes, definitely. Yeah, we have a, a few uh, Girl Scouts that participated last year, and I believe um, this is part of the, um, their efforts at the Girl Scouts. Uh, there's a question. Aside from the three days training in Washington, what other mentoring do we get on a day-to-day -day basis or on an as-needed basis? Uh, we have a, as I mentioned, we have about a monthly check-in that we do with each ambassador. Um, but depending on how much, you know, sort of the need that each ambassador has, the level that they're working at, and you know, sort of what's coming up with their projects, it really varies um, whether we're able to give more assistance and direction. Um, and, you know, sometimes last year we had a few ambassadors that all we had to do was the monthly check-in with them and, and they were good to go. And we had a few that needed a little extra help. And so we had a few extra, you know, phone calls, conference calls, um, email exchanges. So it really kind of, it kind of um, varies with each ambassador. But I would say the minimum is sort of the, the once check-in um, each month. Again, going back to the timeline, um, we'll announce and, and make all notifications to applicants uh, towards the beginning of July. And there's another question, uh, in DC, do we stay in a hotel? Yes. The hotel is the Hotel Polymer, which is in the DuPont area, if you're familiar with DC. That's where everyone will be staying and where most of the training sessions will take place.
Um, there's a question about uh, sort of students from other countries working, um, either working or going to school here in the states, and if they're able, if they're eligible. You don't have to be a U.S. citizen to apply, but you, the work that you're doing and the impact does need to be in the states. That is a question, how's the monthly check-in done? Uh, we typically call ambassadors. Um, sometimes if they're too, too busy, we also just do checkups over via email. Um, one of the things I haven't mentioned yet, but we have a great uh, Facebook group. It's called the Youth Action Center, and it's a great way for ambassadors to keep in touch with each other and network. So we also do a lot of updates um, through the Youth Action Center. There's a question. Um, parents are, can definitely come to the training if they'd like, but again, um, they need to set up their own travel and accommodations. Uh, the grant only covers the ambassador's expenses, and the training is only for the ambassadors. If the $1,000 grant is exhausted, can we request more? No, unfortunately, the $1,000 grant is the, the only funds that each ambassador receives. There's a question if the ambassadors will be sharing hotel rooms with other ambassadors at the training. Yes, we will have two people uh, to a room, and of course it's all uh, same gender. Um, there's a question about the, uh, the step two of the application collaborating with um, organization and if you can collaborate with more than one organization. We definitely encourage and, and want to be other organizations that you're working with, but in the application just put the primary organization that you'll be working with, so just one. If the project is complete and the grant money is left over, what should be done? Um, we ask that with all of our grants, if there's more than $100 left of the grant, it needs to be given back to YSA. Um, but we really work with each of the ambassadors to make sure that they utilize all of their grant funding over the, the course of the September through April months. There's been a few questions about the number of applications submitted and, um, you know, sort of a little bit more of the um, number that's come in. I'm not able to answer any of those questions, so I think the most I'm able to share is that um, we're able to give out one grant per state and D.C. Are there any other questions? All right. Well, thank you all so much for attending today's webinar. I look forward to receiving all of your applications. Again, if you have any um, follow-up questions after today, feel free to shoot me an email and uh, let me know um, how we can help. But I'll go ahead and stop the recording for today's webinar and uh, to sign off. I'll hang on for just a couple more minutes if people have uh, any last-minute questions. But again, thank you so much for uh, joining today's webinar.